Welcome back to Critically Incorrect, your weekly gaming podcast. I'm your host, Brandon, or online here today with Charlie, if you want to say hi. Hello. Yeah, quite a big week for the gaming industry. Probably, I'd say, like, maybe even, like, the biggest news story in, like, the last few years, if you really think about how big of an impact this will have on the industry as a whole. Uh, of course, you know, we'll get into that later on in the episode, but I imagine for a lot of you, you know what it is, Activision being acquired by Microsoft. Um, yeah, but that being said, there isn't terribly a lot to talk about besides that news story, so this episode might be a little bit shorter on the side of things. Um, that being said, I also don't mind that, because if you personally haven't heard by my voice, I'm a little bit, you know, under the weather. I have had COVID this past week or so, so yeah, still recovering from that. Um, I'm not too bad right now. I feel like 80% of the way there, um, but still, you know, just on that upward slope. Um, but yeah, as we always talk about, I know in the beginning of these podcasts, we always talk about what we've been playing. So, Charlie, over the last week or so, what have you been playing gaming-wise? Uh, yeah, I've I've played a, a decent variety of stuff this week. Um, so over the weekend, I started up uh, a new playthrough of, of uh, Horizon. So I put probably two, maybe three hours into that. Um, I'm playing it on New Game Plus on like, I think, I don't know what the hardest difficulty is called, but whatever that one is, um, just because I don't have those trophies, I never did like a New Game Plus run. So um, I've decided to, to boot it up on that. Um, it took a little while to get used to it again because um, I found that because it kind of expects you to have played like the game recently i think when you hop into new game plus on that difficulty so it took me a little while to get to grips with the game again but um i think i'm net there now hopefully going to be playing a bit more of that uh, in the next couple weeks um because my main focus last weekend was playing dying light i finished my replay of the the main story so i beat that and then i did start up the the following expansion but i didn't play a ton because honestly it hasn't really clicked with me um like it's a cool idea with all the driving but i think it takes away the best part of the game which is all the parkour um so i don't know if i'm gonna complete the expansion i've heard the story stuff in the expansion is a lot better than the the main game so i might get around to finishing it but right now i'm a bit unsure because i'm not enjoying enjoying it anywhere near as much as the the main game um and then other than that um i have been getting back into valorant um this past week or so um I don't really know why. I think I just saw some some people streaming it and stuff, and it made me want to play it again. So past few nights, I've been playing a, a few hours of that, which has been quite fun, uh, just playing with randoms online. Although I am planning to play with Warlock at some point, just when our schedules align, um, but I haven't got around to that yet. Um, and then last night, I did try out Hitman 3 in VR, just because that update did launch yesterday. Um, and I'm kind of mixed on it. Uh, a lot of the the talk online is it's very clunky and not very polished right now and it does need a lot of work um but the core that's there is is pretty fun um it has some performance issues but i do know they they put out a hot fix today to try and fix a lot of the performance so i do need to give it another go um but a lot of like mechanically how it works with like wielding weapons and stuff um it tries to kind of replicate other VR games, but because the core is, you know, a typical mouse and keyboard controller game, it doesn't quite work. Um, and like holding guns and stuff is very clunky. I found that I was missing a lot of shots, um, even when like trying to line up with like a pistol for ages and I would miss. Um, it just felt kind of weird, um, but hopefully they'll stick with it and patch it because um, it's a really cool game to have in VR and there's not much really like it. Um, so I do hope they, they keep at it because it's, it's a cool idea to have that game in VR. It's just a shame that it launched in the state it did. Um, but that has been it for this week for me, I believe. Nice, nice. Uh, as for me, I haven't played uh, much besides this one game, and that's the game I said I'd be playing this week, and that's Horizon. I uh, played about like four to five hours over the last week or so, um, or over the days that I wasn't sick, right? Um, and yeah, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, it's definitely, I always think Horizon's a good game. For me, it's like the open world genre is like very hard for me to play without getting bored just because, I don't know, I have a low attention span when it comes to games. So like, uh, oftentimes I'll just get bored unless it's like really captivating me. Um, but yeah, so far I've been like on the brink with Horizon. Like there's been some points where I'm like getting bored, but I'm like pushing myself to play more because I want to get, you know, through. And I know that like some parts later on are you know essentially gonna be better than what i'm currently playing right 
Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot. It's like definitely a good open world game still. Um, the story is definitely, you know, really interesting and like the world of that um, universe is pretty interesting. So definitely just want to play through more of that and refresh myself before, you know, obviously Forbidden West comes out, which I guess a brief plug, they did drop like a story trailer, which we'll um, briefly talk about later on. But yeah, that dropped this week. Um, besides that, that's all I've been playing besides like the normal games like Deep Rock and Fortnite for like multiplayer. Um, I do like I've been contemplating going back to Dying Light and whether or not I want to like revisit that game before the sequel. I'm like, like we're like two weeks away at this point. Um, I kind of feel confident going into Dying Light 2 without playing Dying Light 1 because I feel like the story won't really like matter as much, obviously, like connecting, like connection wise, right? And the gameplay will just be an evolution. So I, I'm leaning towards not, um, but it's definitely still a thought that goes into the back of my head. So we'll see. Um, yeah, that being said, over the next week or so, I'm probably just going to play more Horizon and see where that gets me. And yeah, we'll move on to releases this week. So Rainbow Six Extraction came out yesterday. That's out on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. It's also out on Game Pass, um, technically. So if you have that, you could try it free of charge. Um, I've heard mixed receptions on this game. Um, some people say it's like good. Some people say it's mediocre. Some people trash it, saying it's not worth their time. Uh, yeah, so take that with what you will. I have not personally played it. I know Charlie said that he has it downloaded, but he hasn't, you know, tried it yet. Um, so yeah, you're going to play on, plan on playing that over the next week or so, Charlie? Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to get through to play in an hour or two over the weekend. Um, I've got some mates on Xbox that have downloaded it, so hopefully we're going to give it a go, but it's all dependent on when people are free. Nice, nice. I'll, I might try playing it as well this weekend, we'll see. Um, I'll probably give it a download and see how I like it since it's on Game Pass. Um, but yeah, that's out this week. Um, also out this week, as Charlie hinted at, was the Hitman Trilogy, um, PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Um, yeah, that's a quick side note. I did hear about that PS or that VR version on PC, PC VR. Um, and I did hear it was mediocre. I've heard it was like based off the Move controllers and stuff like that. Like it was really wonky. Um, which is kind of disappointing. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure because I know it didn't have move controller support on P PSVR, so I mm. think that might be where the issues miss... lie, because it originally yeah, okay. it was just the the Dual Shock. So. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, so I know. That, <laughs> I think I even heard like the Reddit or the subreddit for the uh, Hitman um, subreddit was like banned or like closed off because like the mods were being harassed or something. So hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, this hopefully like they get their stuff together. Obviously, talking about the people, not the developers. Um, but <laughs> yeah, let's like that's crazy. Um, like yeah, it's, it's wild. It's wild. I only saw that briefly, like on a Twitter thread. Um, but yeah, and then also out this week, this actually dropped the same day as um, the Microsoft acquisition of um, or the Activision acquisition by Microsoft, and that's Nobody Saves the World. This is out on Game Pass, Xbox, and PC. Um, I actually saw this and I was contemplating downloading it. It's like not that big of a game. It looks like this like really charming um, action adventure game. Um, so yeah, definitely gonna give that a go. Have you played this trailer or no? I haven't. I have downloaded it because I really like Guacamelee One and Two. So yeah, I was gonna say that's um, the developers behind it. Yeah. Yeah, I I do want to give it a go, and I haven't really looked too much into it. So um, hopefully I'll give it a go at some point over the next week. But there's other things I want to play. So who knows whether that'll happen or not. You know, people always have their, like, save file horror story. That's Guacamelee for me. That's the one game I know in history where, like, someone deleted my save file, and that was my brother. Like, I remember I was really into that game when it came out on PS Plus, and I played for, like, a few hours, and my brother just had to play, and he, like, deleted over my, like, current save file. So I never went back to that game. Oof. But I definitely want to at some point. So I'll definitely give it a go, because Guacamelee was, like, underrated as hell. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the releases this week. We'll move on to the gaming news, and we'll start with the big news story here, and obviously we've already talked about this like twice already on the episode. Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard for $68 billion. So yeah, when I I woke up the morning that this news broke up, and I was like, I thought I was like hallucinating from like a fever or something like that. Like I thought it was like my sickness or something like that. But no, this is real. Um, yeah, they bought Activision Blizzard for $68 billion. Uh, kind of crazy. You forget how big of company Microsoft is, right? That they can afford to spend something like that as like an investment. Um, essentially, Activision Blizzard really is like the biggest 
one of the biggest third party. Like, I think they're up there at least, like, top two, top three. Like, the only ones that could even, like, compete with them are, like, maybe Take Two. I don't think EA could compete with them because they don't have, like, a franchise as big as Call of Duty is. But, like, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, obviously, what this means for the future is, you know, technically, um, going forward, they're going to have to report to Phil Spencer, the whole division of um, Activision Blizzard. There's no really clear word yet on what's going to happen to Bobby Kotick. I've seen people say, like, I've seen him say that he's going to stay, but then I've heard, you know, other things where, like, obviously that's only until the deal closes and then they can give him the boot. Either way, they're going to have to report to, act, to Xbox, right? So that's going to change things going forward and hopefully mean that the working conditions can get better. Um, but obviously, like, the big imp implications for this is the fact that, you know, Xbox obviously has another huge studio. A lot of people are kind of fearful of, you know, monopolization here in the industry because the gaming industry isn't really that big. This is essentially, like, a huge portion of the third-party base, right? Um, so, yeah, now IPs that are all owned from, like, Blizzard, um, things like, you know, obviously um, Overwatch and Diablo and even, like, the biggest Activision IPs like Call of Duty technically now are under Xbox, so... They have a lot more IPs at their disposal. Crash Bandicoot now is funny because it used to be a PlayStation mascot. Now it's an Xbox mascot, really. Like, they own the IP now, which is crazy. Um, just before we talk about this, I do want to talk about the developments of this new story. So, Phil Spencer, I believe, tweeted out, like, yesterday that he talked to the Sony higher-ups, and he essentially outlined his goal with them and essentially said that he plans to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation um, and to, like, keep the current deals that are in place by contractual agreements in place. Um, people are like going really deep into the wording of that tweet and whether or not that means Call of Duty will stay on PlayStation going forward. I think it kind of makes sense that it's going to stay on PlayStation going forward. People are saying that maybe that means that they signed like Xbox Game Pass to be a thing on PlayStation, but I honestly kind of just think he's just saying it as it is. I think he just realizes that this is just like Minecraft, right? Where they're going to be more profitable if they keep Call of Duty as a third party uh, release on PlayStation um, on top of just being on Xbox and PC. So, yeah, um, I guess I've spoken a lot about this news story already. So, Charlie, what'd you think about this news story? Kind of crazy. Yeah, I, I mean, it's crazy, right? Like, I remember, so when it happened, I was I was playing Fortnite with one of my mates, and I saw it pop up, and I was just like, what the actual fuck? Like, I just stopped playing because um, I had to read all about it. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's one of the biggest acquisitions of all time, right? Like I think yeah. it's like the third biggest ever acquisition in in history. Like it's an insane amount of money, um, and I mean obviously it's not physical money, right? Like it's all all shares and stuff, but it's still an insane value to to think about. Um, but yeah, I'm really interested to see how this one turns out because obviously when it was the the Bethesda acquisition, even though this is a much larger one than that, there was a lot of um, uh, work that had to be done to make sure that nothing weird and fishy was going on right there was a lot of investigation going on i imagine this one is going to be even more scrutinized um because it is such a large acquisition um and hence why it probably won't be finalized until next summer which would obviously be a longer period of time than the the bethesda one was because i think that was under a year if i remember rightly uh, yeah, it's like a little under a year. Yeah. So yeah, whereas this one's probably going to be over a year to to get finished. Um, but I'm I'm actually super excited to see how this turns out because um, I think Activision have a lot of IPs that they don't really utilize. Uh, things like Prototype, uh, obviously for me, Guitar Hero, um, even Skylanders to an extent. Like all that stuff hasn't been used in in a long, long time. Um, and things like. Phil Spencer saying that he's eager to, to revisit a lot of older Activision IPs and franchises. Um, and he wants to let a lot of like the supporting studios at Activision, people like Toys for Bob, um, to actually get to work on other IPs other than COD, which I think lines up with a lot of the rumors we've been hearing alongside this. Um, that Activision have been having talks that they might move away from the yearly cycle for, for COD, right? Um, so I, I think it was Jason reporting on Bloomberg saying that um, they, they've been thinking about moving away. It would probably mean that COD games are going to have an average of sort of three to four years development time because you'd have Infinity Ward and Treyarch working on them, um, which is a is a really good idea, honestly, because um, whilst I enjoy the COD games every year, there's always something not right with them. You know, there's there's always something that goes wrong that they don't quite get right. Or they don't carry over from the last game. 
Um, and I think that that extra year or two of dev time per game would really go a long way. So hopefully that's something they can incorporate into joining Microsoft. Um, and then obviously, you know, hopefully this doesn't affect staff as much as I think they're, they're worrying. Obviously, I think there's a lot of hesitancy from current staff at Activision Blizzard. You know, is there going to be a ton of layoffs? What is this going to mean for their jobs? I, I did also see there was some some funny things of like, uh, somebody tweeted saying their mate had like made a really big life decision to leave Microsoft and join Activision like last week, and now they're gonna be back at Microsoft again <laughs> after all that, which is quite funny. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm I'm super positive about it. I think it it's a, a great deal for Microsoft, right? Like they're just bolstering their their studios even more. I just hope that we start to see something of all these acquisitions, you know because we've been seeing them acquire studios for the past like three, four years at this point. Um, and I still don't think they're quite at the point where they have the games to back that stuff up. You know, Sony have all these games that come out every year to critical acclaim, and I really want Microsoft to be able to compete in that space, but right now they haven't got that. Um, so, you know, if this adds to that um, that fire, right, like that will be really good. Um, but overall, I, I'm super positive about it. And like I said before, Phil Spencer's really happy he's got the Guitar Hero IP, and Bobby Kotick has said he has had ideas for a new Guitar Hero for years, so, you know, I'm waiting, that's the most exciting news for me this week. <laughs> that's great, that's great. Uh, yeah, in terms of, like, when we'll see all these acquisitions, like, come into fruition, I imagine, like, hopefully soon, right? Um, obviously, acquisitions are always, like, a process, and game development takes a while, so, like, I always assume, like, hopefully we'll be able to see some of these things turn into actual like releases, you know, within a few years and it'll help, you know, spread out, of course, all these, um, cause obviously the Xbox like originally had like a lot of gaps with the Xbox one life cycle. So a lot of these acquisitions will help with that. They'll just have more studios, more games to pump out. They'll have a ton of games, honestly, if you think about it in a few years, like, especially if they own now Activision and, um, uh, uh, why am I coming blank? What's the other big one? Um, uh, not Blizzard, uh, the other... How am I forgetting King? this company? No, I'm trying to think of the one they acquired like a year ago. Oh, Bethesda. Bethesda, there we go. I don't know why I was blanking on that <laughs> name. But yeah, that shows you how much I play those games. Uh, but yeah, once they have like Bethesda, because obviously Starfield's probably coming out this year or like next year, I imagine we'll start seeing like a lot of the fruits of these, you know, deals, right? So only time will tell. But yeah, I think it's a it's a mixed thing. I think Jason Schreier had a tweet that kind of put it best, and he's like, "There's me pros and cons." Like, obviously, the big con for me, at least, is the monopolization of the industry, uh, just because you know th that's a huge third party portion, like going directly under third like first party now, technically. Um, yeah, that's always scary, especially because the gaming industry isn't that large. Um, but also just the fact that you know the conditions at Activision weren't like the best, so there's also the optimization like the um, optimistic you know feeling that you know with new leadership will come better conditions and that's always a good thing as well so only time will tell uh hopefully though at least you know without being under bobby Kotick, um hopefully you know they won't be focused on like making every game like a billion dollar franchise like he always reported um and hopefully they'll just be able to put out quality games now that you know they have better leadership so yeah Anyways, we'll move on to a similar kind of story that has to do with Activision. This has to do with Raven Software. So this new story actually broke today. This morning, I think it was like 36 or something like that, QA developers all decided to unionize and submit like a request for uni unionization. Um, yeah, this is actually the first group in North America to do so um, in the big gaming industry. So that's quite a feat. Um, obviously, unionization is uh, obviously something that would very much protect game developers. A lot of people have been trying to push um, the gaming industry to unionize. Obviously, you know, the big corporations don't want that because that means they wouldn't get to, you know, get away with a lot of the stuff they currently do because there'd be standards put in place. Um, yeah, I think I need to, like, educate myself more on, like, what that would mean. But I think it's a good idea, honestly, considering the crunch culture that a lot of the big studios at least you know, take up on unionization, essentially put in standards in place so that they can do some of the unhumane things that they do um, in some of these companies. And obviously with the QA department, like Raven Software, I imagine for like, you know, yearly releases that they have to do in like a live act, uh, live service game like Warzone that, you know, obviously 
and that probably pushed them to, you know, submit this request to UNI. So very, very cool stuff to see. So Charlie, what'd you think about that? Yeah, it's, it's great to see that this is finally starting to happen. Um, and I think it makes sense that we're seeing it in QA first. I think most of these kind of like big stories about crunch and workplace culture kind of originate from QA. Obviously, the, it, it affects all parts of the industry, but QA seems to be where a lot of these problems happen. And it's because I think a lot of the studios kind of treat QA as, as expendable, right? They're kind of just there to crunch and break your game and and report problems and then when the game is out you're done right they get rid of you um and we we saw a lot of raven qa staff get let go last year um which was a very big deal because obviously that not only did they not know it was going to happen you know they're working on a live service game they're working on warzone why would they have let off all those staff it was a really weird situation so i'm i'm glad that this is happening um it's a really good first step um so hopefully we we see something come of it um but yeah i i guess do you want me to just go into kind of like the next story i guess because this kind of goes into it if we mention yeah the other you can first. talk about it if you want yeah so yeah obviously uh we also did get this week that um lego star wars the skywalker saga is finally coming out uh, it's coming out on the 5th of April, but alongside this Polygon, um, who normally I don't really read their articles, but they actually had a, a decent one with this, um, which is they, they've heard from a lot of different developers across uh, TT Games who are making LEGO Star Wars and make all the LEGO games, um, that there's been a lot of crunch um, going on at the studio to make sure this project comes out, um, which, like the previous uh, article, actually originates a lot in the QA um with loads of staff reporting you know breaking down emotionally after work and long hours and and being pushed and moaned at from from staff um honestly i don't find it too surprising we were hearing a lot last year um of a lot of people from uh, tt games leaving uh, especially a lot of uh, heads of the studio actually um like a lot of the higher ups that have worked on a lot of the layer games for a long long time a lot of them left um I imagine this lines up with it. I I guess there was a lot of those staff that didn't agree what was going on and, and wanted to leave, and some of them might have just left on their own accord, right? Um, and it sucks to hear stuff like this, but the, the saddest part of the story for me um, is because it broke the day that the, the date came out. Loads of people were super hyped about the game because I think it looks great. Um, it's definitely like the most impressive lego game they've made it, it seems to be a big step up and that's partially due to the this new engine which i think has caused a lot of problems for the studio um but as soon as that news dropped about you know the crunch uh, and workplace culture at tt games so many people online suddenly wanted to boycott the game and i i just don't understand that that thought process because you have to imagine these people that have crunched on the game right they still want to work on the game like, even though they hate that they're having to crunch and, you know, it's destroying their lives, they still love working on games and want people to experience what they've worked on. And so I, I think, if anything, the worst thing you can do is suddenly boycott a game because the developers have, you know, worked tirelessly to get it done. Um, so, you know, I'm super excited about the game. I will be playing it. I think it's it sucks that these things happen um and the best we can do is you know support the developers i think that's the best way to do it um but yeah sucks that this news came out alongside such a big like moment for the game because it was announced like nearly three years ago which is an insanely long time for a game like this um i think they said it's been developed for like four or five years um so that's a, a long dev cycle for a game like this but yeah yeah that's crazy uh Good to see that have a date, and then I read through that article as well, and I was, you know, very surprised because I know that Lego games usually don't take this long, but reading for that article, I'm like, no wonder it took forever. Um, yeah, essentially, you know, as Charlie kind of mentioned, the fact that they chose like a weird like custom engine over Unreal Engine, which a majority of the team wanted to switch over to, and even like had like a pitch ready um, with like a working kind of like prototype of it working. Um, they still decide to go with this uh, custom engine just so they can cut around fees, which in the end costed them a lot of development time. So was it worth it? Probably not. Um, yeah, obviously at the expense as well as like team morale as well. Um, just crazy to see. Hopefully they get their stuff figured out and just choose to use an engine that everyone's, you know, 
kind of you know accustomed to right like unreal engine um but yeah very very crazy stuff over there just the realities of game development but like a lot of the stuff can be avoided if you just have good leadership like yeah i don't know that stuff's just very frustrating to see um but yeah we'll move on Anyway, it's a little quick news story here that I saw on Twitter was the fact that apparently there's rumors that Battlefield 2042 is possibly going to be going free to play in some form or another. Um, this is being done because of low sales of the game, which I think is kind of apparent. Like, yeah, Battlefield 2042, like if you're in the gaming system, you kind of know that it didn't really sell that well. Um, I'm not sure what kind of form. I know Charlie and I were talking about, I know like before Battlefield came out, wasn't it rumored that one of the modes was going to be free to play? Yeah, has its own. Do you think that's going to be the one that goes free to play or do you think it's going to be the base multiplayer? If if I was to be a betting man, I would say that it would be the, the base multiplayer and they would try and make Portal like the paid game because currently that's the best mode in the game i i think that's where most of the player base is is in the, like the portal mode with the custom servers and stuff um i'm just kind of like i really don't know what ea is doing and from the sounds of all like the rumors from like tom and s some other leakers like neither does ea like they they really don't know what their plan is with this because it seems like a lot of the problems the game has are quite integral to its core and so ripping a lot of like the issues out of the game would break it and would cost them more money than to just make a new game. Um, so I think it sounds like at this point EA are kind of just doing whatever they can to make some money off of the game um, whilst being able to work on a new Battlefield because I know Tom has been saying for a while that they are already in pre-production on whatever the next thing is. Um but it's, it really sucks, because I think the foundation for 2042 is really good. Like, I, I still enjoyed my time with the game, and I will go back when eventually new content comes out to it. Um, but I think it sucks it, it released at the state it did. I think it sucks that there's a long wait for content, and that they don't really know what they're doing, or, you know, what EA wants from DICE, right? Like, I think I feel like there's a lot of developers at DICE that are just unsure of what they're working on right now, um, which has got to be a really weird position to be in, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what they would make free to play. I just don't think it will be Hazard Zone because that's, like, the least fun mode in that game. Like, there's just... No, it's so bare bones, there's nothing to it. So they probably won't even, they like, get sales. Break. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Very, very interesting. Um, yeah, it sucks. I feel like the shooting landscape was so weird um, this fall. Like, Halo was, like, the clear winner, in my opinion, because, like, both Call of Duty and Battlefield... Like, both of them this year kind of fizzled, in my opinion, at least for me. Um, like, there's just not much excitement with those. I, I really miss Respawn, man. I want them to come out with, like, a new single-player slash multiplayer shooter like Titanfall. Uh, yeah, because, like, you can even see, like, Battlefield Portal was their mode, and that was the best part of Battlefield's, like, package at launch. So, yeah, that says a lot. Anyways, we'll move on to a Suda51 news story. Um, this is actually pretty recent, and he said that um, I'll just, I'll give, like, the context of this is kind of, um, confusing. So he's essentially talking to, um, a publication, Automation, and they're, or Automata, and they're talking about pretty much their future projects. I think we've talked about this in the past, where he was like, they want to work on, like, three I new IPs, right? Um, some, like, crazy large number. And then he added on, however, we have also said that we would like to make IPs that are based on attractive original works. If there are any, I think that will depend on these discussions we've had with Marvel Studios. If Marvel Studios comes up with something good, we'll think about it. And he said he was joking, and he said, I'm sorry, I was saying that from the top down, I'm just kidding. But then he clarified, and he said, we've had a few meetings with Marvel, and we talked about the possibility of working together on something. We hope that the power of video games will help boost these opportunities. So, yeah, it seems like early discussions, like, nothing really set in stone. Uh, people have wanted them to make, like, dead, like, you know obviously with Marvel given like his kind of state of games being very cartoonish and um having those similar vibes to the right I know didn't he work on like a Deadpool game like long ago like on the yeah, PS3 so back on like the the PS3 generation there was a time when Activision approached him to work on a Deadpool game but it never really went anywhere I think it was very early stages um, yeah okay but he's always expressed interest in doing like a Deadpool game um which I think would be a, a perfect fit, right? Like, Suda does a really great job of having, like, that cartoony, comic, like, adult vibe to all his Definitely. games. And that's exactly what Deadpool is. Um, 
So something like that would be really cool. Um, or even if yeah, I think he does mention a, a, another like Marvel hero that I've never heard of, but I'd honestly like to see something really like out there because I think that just gives him more freedom if he just picks like a really random character that no one's heard of, right? Um, but either way, like I love Suda's games, so um, something from Marvel would be really cool. Um, where they'd fit that in with their three IPs that he wants to make in the next ten years, who knows? Because that's that's a lot of game to make in ten years. So, <laughs> yeah, um, that's a lot of games. I don't know if that would go anywhere, but um, I'm sure if you got the opportunity, you'd definitely like to to do something with Marvel. So, yeah, the other, like the other person he said, I have not heard of Shatterstar. No idea who that is. Yeah, uh, probably some recent Marvel hero. Or I probably should not say that because now it's someone like from Marvel, like. <laughs> Or like someone that's in the I'm gonna look at I'm gonna look them up. Do, I can, I'm look looking at a picture and I don't even recognize them. They're from X Men. Okay. Okay. So that that's probably like a legacy character. Yeah. Okay. From 1990. That's why I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> All right. Uh, Interesting stuff. Go. So yeah, him or Deadpool apparently are his top two picks currently. So we'll see if anything progresses. Obviously, just early talks at the moment. And yeah. Anyways, a new story that we actually didn't cover last week. I think it broke like literally like an hour or two before we recorded last week. Um, we just forgot to put on the dock or something. How like somehow slipped past us. Um, but this is essentially that uh, Respawn is working on a new single player movement based FPS. But the catch is it's not Titanfall three. So what this is, who knows? Uh, obviously, when you think of like a single player FPS from Respawn, you would immediately go to Titanfall three, right? Um, but You'd imagine it's a new IP then. Like, uh, who knows if it's in the Titanfall universe, because technically that's, you know, Apex Legends and Titanfall are in the same universe, right? So I imagine it's like completely, completely new because if they wanted to do an FPS in the Titanfall universe, it would just be a Titanfall game, right? But who knows, honestly? Who knows what this could be? Um, do you have any thoughts on this, Charlie? Yeah, I mean, I'm really interested to see what it ends up being, right? Because... I think the FPS space is kind of hard to to get into like with something completely fresh. I think Titanfall got very lucky in that it came up with a, a quite unique idea and it got into the futuristic landscape before a lot of the other companies did. Um, so I don't know where they would go with it, right? Like they, I don't think they can do like a, a modern game. There's just too much of that with COD and Battlefield, they can't do... I wouldn't want to see Respawn do, like, a historic game. Also, I don't think it would work with, like, movement-based. Um, like, because I, when I think movement-based, I just think sliding and stuff, so I just don't see that in, like, a historically accurate game. Um, but hey, maybe it's, like, a new Medal of Honor. Um, it, it's entirely possible they worked on the, the Medal of Honor VR game, right? So, who knows? Um, it sucks that it's not Titanfall 3, but honestly, I just... I'm not expecting them to ever make that game and then one day it will show up and it will surprise me so um you know it sucks it's not that because I love Titanfall 2 um and I love that movement system and that campaign but um yeah unfortunately it's not that yeah so I was looking at the source behind this and it's actually just Jeff Grubb he tweeted out I yeah. said just Jeff Grubb you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> tweeted out um what they're currently working on he said Apex Legends Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order 2 and a third game that is a single player first person action game focused on mobility and style so that's literally all we have is mobility and style um that's such a weird description though obviously given the fact that like that's literally what I would think of like I think style might be the more interesting word in that sentence so maybe like the artistic nature, maybe it's going to be something uh, something you wouldn't expect for like an FPS or something like that. Um, so maybe cell shading or some different style you wouldn't associate with the FPS genre. That's interesting. Either way, he said to clarify that it's like an early like prototyping right now. So this is definitely years away. Like this will be years probably after Jedi Fallen Order 2. So yeah, we'll have that game presumably you know, announced this year and maybe even released this year. Who knows? Um, but then, yeah, this game's like farther, farther off. Um, yeah, looking forward to just getting my hands on another respawn game. Like they're up there in terms of my favorite developers in terms of just being consistent with the releases, right? And it's crazy to see that they even like, like Jedi Fallen Order was like such a different game for the studio, and they still knocked it out of the park despite you know pretty much being the first person shooter studio. Um, so yeah, just anything they could tackle is going to be good, and especially if they're going back to the first person genre, like. I cannot wait. Um, so yeah, 
That being said, that is it for this week. Yeah, not a lot to talk about, but we did have that huge news story that, you know, obviously Microsoft bought acquisition. So, yeah, with that being said, let us know all your thoughts on all this gaming news, of course, in the comment section down below. Or, of course, you can click the link to our make a way to our Discord server. But with that being said, we'll see you next week for episode 56. Take care. See you later.